Welcome to Supply Chain Africa News. My name is Wandabu Wanyama. Today we are talking about professionalization of supply chain. With me I have guests whom I will allow them to introduce themselves. From my father's right, Mr. Michael, you can take it over. Yeah, thank you Mr. Wandabu. My name is Michael Makosala. I am an independent consultant in supply chain management. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Eric Wakaria. I'm the country director for Association for Supply Chain Management. We do work in the country and in the region to improve uh, supply chain uh, technical capabilities, but also to strengthen the end-to-end -end supply chain. Um, my name is Joseph Fatengesa, and thank you so much, uh, Mr. Andava, for having me today to discuss this very important uh, uh, subject. Uh, let me start my introduction locally, mm -hmm. because I think locally and act globally. Yeah, so, or I, the other way around. <laughs> so, um, uh, locally, I'm a, a member of the Kenya Institute of Supply Management, that is KSM. I'm a licensed practitioner uh, since 2016, but I've been a member for many years of the KSM. I'm also an examiner for the last five years at KSM. And uh, uh, internationally, uh, I'm an employee of the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, UK, uh, currently implementing a project uh, sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, to help strengthen uh, health supply chains in Africa. Uh, Kenya is one of the three countries that were piloted for this uh, uh, initiative. Uh, the other one is Nigeria and uh, South Africa. And I'm the country representative for Kenya, of course, overseeing other cluster countries like um, uh, Ethiopia and Tanzania. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Yeah. Shall I, I've just had your introductions and I feel like I need to reintroduce myself. I'm the host of Supply Chain Africa News. <laughs> now, <laughs> gentlemen, you are all looking great. Thank you for coming. Mm. Mr. Michael, <coughs> before we continue, I want us to, I want you to give us a brief introduction or about where did supply chain begin? Now, um, the genesis of supply chain in the country basically <clears throat> or picked up from uh, the colonial days because you see Kenya being a colony of the British, uh, you know, uh, government, so to speak, uh, was actually, you know, um, being facilitated by Crown Agents. Crown Agents was actually providing for supplies for the colonialists uh, and was actually procuring commodities from overseas because at that time most of the commodities could not be available locally or was actually not available locally. So or as time went by, you know, when now Kenya attained independence, uh, the Overseas Development Authority mandated Crown Agents to basically uh, provide functions to the governmental offices. And uh, uh, because the government ministries or organizations at that time were not as many, uh, there was a, 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 you know, a, a department which was actually providing these services, the supplies branch, which is still available here, I think, in Likoni Road. The supply branch basically was being, um, you know, kind of uh, formulated by the Crown Agents, and they're the ones who, that is actually where this, the functions began. And, uh, you know, at that time, there weren't many trained personnel, so they were picking stuff from different, you know, uh, areas and trying to train them. So when the government of Kenya uh, came to its feet, um, you know, the function was actually under the tr or Treasury. So the Treasury uh, started formulating, you know, this uh, function. And then uh, uh, around about probably 1972 or thereabouts, uh, that's when now they, 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 they started, you know, the, the evolution of supply chain management commenced in the government. Because before then, other entities that were operating were operating in silos and everybody was looking at their activities without basically a clear definition. So now when uh, the head of supplies department was uh, first appointed, I cannot remember which year, but the, the gentleman whom, uh, when I came on board in 1981, 
um, in the Ministry of uh, Livestock Development, uh, there was a Mr. Wangu, who was actually the head of supplies. So at that time, um, the supplies management was actually being guided by a document or something which was known as supplies manual. It is then that this manual was providing guidance on how operationalization and um, making uh, you know, supplies available. Uh, predominantly, it was just furniture, office stationery, and those kind of things. And from time to time, it kept on moving uh, ev uh, you know, through the evolution. And uh, the government was able to formulate and make it come, uh, you know, become a function which was now recognized. And it, then it was actually under the, the, the uh, chief of chief accountants or that kind of thing. Then eventually it was, you know, when World Bank came up with uh, re reforms and what have you, it was separated for, for purposes of, uh, uh, you know, separation of uh, specific functions because you could not be the person buying and at the same time the person paying. So that was separated. And then uh, um, many reforms took place through the trainings and uh, guidance of uh, Crown Agents. The World Bank also came in and a lot of revisions you know, came, came through. That's basically when now the function was recognized as supplies um, or you know, function, separating it from finance and administration. Because at that time, it was, there was a lot of confusion. Does it fall under finance or does it fall under administration? In a lot of organizations at that time, it was falling under the executive officer, the, the administrative officers, and all of you. Um, so, you know, w you, when, when you interview the pioneers like um, people like uh, Wangu, people like uh, JKN Nyete, the people, the, we, had a, we had several level of them those days, like Mr. JN Karaoke or something, who are the chief supplies officers. These people were trained by crown agents. And they were, they were the ones who basically pioneered the, the, the supplies or management. And then what happened is when East African community broke up, all the Kenyans who were in supplies management in, in community came over and they were absorbed into the ministry. And the government came up with um, uh, what they were calling um, career, career, I mean, I think it was known as... Uh, they were coming up, they came up with some framework that would basically define who is a supplies officer, what are the, the qualifications, and that kind of thing. And then through training that um, the government came up with in Kenya Institute of Management, they now started clearly uh, training people who are becoming supplies officers, warehouse officers, and that kind of thing. So that's basically how supplies evol um, evolved up to the time when now we came to, I think the, the time when we, um, the, the Supplies Act was enacted in Parliament, and we had people like Luko Biri, um, you know, ascending to that position of Director of uh, procure, Public Procurement, and uh, up to this particular time when we now have the procurement law. So it has evolved from the colonial times up to this particular time when we now have that law enacted in the Constitution. Mr. Wakad, if um, uh, I just come to you, how did you know about supply chain? Well, it's quite an interesting journey. I am a trained uh, biomedical scientist by training, having practiced in lab system strengthening. But still, when I was in the lab sector, I could always find a gap in terms of the supply chain. Yes, in terms of service delivery, you're offering the test in uh, quite a fast time, but you also have challenges in out of stock for the reagents, for the equipment. And uh, that triggered my mind and I was like, I need to fix that gap because you look at the entire system end to end. And I bumped into this project that was being read by John Snow Incorporated in terms of now supply chain system strengthening. And having now gotten into that organization, I needed to beef up my education in terms of understanding the entire supply chain. So the journey, that's where I got to learn about it. But then I needed to improve my technical abilities. So currently, uh, I enrolled in Certified Supply Chain Profession course offered by ASCM that looks at the end-to-end -end of the supply chain. So not just you know the upstream, but also the downstream. 
that was not enough because you may have the technical capabilities, but you also have to look at the system. So I did another course known as Supply Chain Operation Reference, which is quite an integrated framework that not just look at the person, the people themselves, but you have to look at the performance. So you define your key performance indicators for your supply chain. You have to look at the practices. So are you inculcating the best practices and emerging practices in supply chain, you know, in terms of demand management, supplies management, and so forth. But you also look, so you look at the people, you look at the processes, again, doing a value streaming for your supply chain, you look at the practices. So those four elements then makes the supply chain more beefed up in terms of performance. So that, that has been my journey in terms of entering the supply chain space. Yours is such an interesting story. Uh, I really want to hear more of it. Uh, uh, let me just go to Mr. Ngesa. How was your experience before you decided that you want to do supply chain? In fact, I'll take over I mean, from where my two colleagues left. Eh? Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, uh, my brother Marco Sala mentioned about how, where supply chain has come uh, uh, from in Kenya. Of course, uh, the legal framework that I might also need to add on is that uh, uh, then uh, the, 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 the operations of the supply chain or procurement then used to work based on circulars from the Ministry of uh, Finance, that's uh, the Treasury, until uh, 2005 when the first uh, act was, uh, was enacted. Uh, that was the Public Procurement uh, uh, Disposal Act 2005 and uh, Regulations 2006. That's when now the real law started taking uh, effect. Up to now, today when you are speaking about the 2015 uh, PPADA, which is the Public Procurement Asset and Disposal Act, and uh, 2020 regulations. Now, besides that, uh, again, like I said, I'm taking over from where my, fr my colleagues left. <coughs> I think for the interest of viewers, I need to clarify that um, uh, there are people who confuse uh, terminology and uh, Usually, they use them interchangeably. Uh, people talk about supply chain, referring to procurement, mm -hmm. uh, stores, and you know, because we are here to talk about professionalization, we also need to give guidance to those yeah. people who want to enter into the um, uh, profession, profession to know exactly where they, they, they fit in or where they can fit in. So, supply chain is the overall, uh, you know, is the bigger picture of, of, the, of things. Uh, because, like he's mentioned, it's, you are looking at things from the upstream to the downstream. For example, you are looking at uh, uh, where the goods travel after manufacture, from the manufacturer to the consumer. Okay? Like now, if I ask you how these this, uh, uh, oranges or, or, or water reached here, you have to understand that they traveled some journey. So when you are looking at that pipeline, that's what we call supply chain management. But within supply chain management, we have components like procurement, like storage, distribution, logistics. Yeah. So that needs to be uh, clarified. Now, back to your question. Uh, I've also had a, 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 an interesting experience. I also started in the labs. Yeah, that one is what you want yeah. to do. <laughs> I started in the labs as a lab assistant. I was employed uh, by the Aga Khan Hospital as a laboratory assistant on the job trained. Yeah, I did that for nine years, taking blood from patients. Can patients. you imagine? Yeah. And then uh, from there, uh, Aga Khan Hospital decided to centralize purchasing. And all the people who were handling, wh while I was still in the lab, I was given the, the responsibility of taking care of uh, looking after the consumables, the things used in the lab. Okay, Like s basically managing the, st the small store within the lab on top of my job, okay? So when, when, when uh, uh, Aga Khan uh, also decided to centralize uh, purchasing, we had purchasing and stores under, uh, uh, in different areas, uh, they decided, the lab decided that the only person who can represent them in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the now, what they even call today materials management division, was somebody like Joseph who knew what they were using, mm -hmm. yeah? So I was, I was actually moved from the lab to materials management division. That's now where I started honing my procurement skills. Okay. I started now registering for uh, CIPS. I did my foundation while I was still there. Then of course, uh, having worked at the hospital for many years, in fact I had worked there for 14 years, 
I, I saw myself not really, you know, you reach a time when you feel you are not enjoying what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And I had already been exposed to the, the, the science uh, part of the things. Now I wanted to, like he said, now the operations, the, 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 where really the impact, feeling uh, how, you know, what patients feel like when there's nothing, uh, when a, a syringe or a, a, a medicine is missing. <coughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I decided now um, to pursue that line, but uh, because I was not growing, I decided to resign. I took a, a bold step. I didn't know why I was going, by the way, but uh, <laughs> I just said, now that I've uh, known what the science uh, provides, I've uh, studied. Um, I have a foundation that's level four of uh, CIPS. Uh, why don't I register for business management? Because in business management now you have a bigger picture of the business environment. Yeah, yeah in supply, uh, in uh, procurement and stores, there are specific areas you are looking at. But now in the business I mean, uh, business management, you're looking at the wider environment, management, human resource, uh, total quality management. Yeah. So I decided to go uh, uh, to register with the K I mean, uh, Kim, Kenya Institute of Management. Yeah. I argued a bit with the Kenyan Institute of Management because they thought with the level four, it was foundation. You know, they were looking at the word foundation mm -hmm. and they thought that was so low. Yeah? So they told me, we can only admit you at certificate level. I did not want to appear arrogant or uh, to think that uh, because it's a foreign exam and you know, we have to also oblige to what the local uh, industry wants. So I registered at certificate level. I did certificate level for six months. I did... Um, uh, uh, an advanced certificate in business management for six months. I did a diploma, uh, an ordinary diploma for another six months, and I did the final diploma, okay. which uh, one would call a higher national diploma in another six months. So I graduated at Kenya Institute of Management. Okay. So from there, then um, uh, there's a doctor who opened up a, a, a lab. I was just discussing it with my friend uh, Eric here. Uh, uh, then called me to look at her logistics, uh, bringing in now the machinery. So was that your first job as a supply chain officer now? Remember, mm -hmm. I was in Agakana as a stores person. Yes. Yeah, so that was my first encounter okay. with supply chain. Okay. Yeah. So I was in the stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now uh, I joined her. Now procurement proper now. Okay. In fact, now my, my responsibility became procurement and logistics. Okay. So I was looking after the procurement of uh, goods, mm -hmm. uh, the reagents, the equipment, plus looking after motorbike riders because samples have to be taken to doctors and the results have to be taken to doctors. Samples have been taken from doctors for analysis to the lab, then results taken back to the doctors. I will come back yeah. to you to yeah. ask you how that experience was. Yeah. I want my, Mr. Michael to tell me, at that time, the first time now you joined supply chain, how was the environment like? Now, at that time, um, you know, basically, like I said, the government was just uh, formulating these, uh, you know, departments. And, uh, the department which was actually um, more recognized was, was accounting or finance, so to speak, with administration and uh, uh, what they were calling the executive office. That's where you'd find registry uh, offices, you'd find transport, you'd find finance, because that's where people were going for allowances and all of you. Stores, so to speak, were basically a place where things were being dumped. This is where you'd find old tires, you'd find old furniture, and uh, you would be provided with some small space where predominantly what was being issued there was stationary. In fact, the stationary store was more what was much more decent than uh, those other stores because the main thing that was being um, you know kept for purposes of providing senior government officers was stationary so uh, then we had the small departmental stores where secretaries would keep stationary for the senior man for the senior director you know like for example if they require stationary writing parts that's where the secretary would go and the secretary would, is the one who would come to the store to take those supplies and keep them. So my first posting was actually in um, Narok. I was posted as a storeman in Narok, and uh, there was no sitting space. My responsibility was basically to issue fuel to motor vehicles. 
And what would happen, we would come all the way from Narok to the supplies branch to collect fuels in barrels of 200, you know, drums. So these barrels would be kept there. And my responsibility was to issue 20 liters to all vehicles every day and record that. We had tally cards, we had bean cards, and that's where, you know, the recording and everything was happening. Oh, I remember, you know, when uh, we were being, people were being assigned jobs by the executive officer. Uh, depending on your relationship with the executive officer, you'd be assigned a particular job. So m in my case, I was assigned to the store. It means yours was bad, right? I am not sure. <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Yes. So now, because, because I was assigned there, it was so dirty, so unkempt, and I could only sit in the executive office. So whenever they required the supplies, that's when I would go with my keys, you know, a bunch of keys. I would open the store, remove whatever they want, record it in the, in the bean cards. I think it was known as S11, if I remember well. And then the other one was S12 or something, the one for issuing out, yeah. that kind of thing. So the S12 would be held by the executive officer. You know, he would write what they want to be withdrawn from the stores, and then I go remove it, and I would enter it in, into the ledgers. So, oh, it is important for me to mention here that at that time, there was a purchase order book, which was uh, printed at the government printer, and it had serial numbers. That purchase order book used to be kept by the executive officer under his drawer, under lock and key. Whenever they wanted to buy things, he's the one who, who would write it. Mark you, he was a, either the executive officer or the accountant. He would write it, put the vote, vote book control account number. I think it was the accounting number, indicating where the funds would come from. Then he would tear it, go with it to the stores in town, hardware shop or something, bring the goods along with the delivery no the invoice, and he would give me the invoice to go and record, uh, uh, the delivery note to go and record in the stores. It was like a personal property, right? Kind of thing, because he was uh, managing it, and you know, there was, the requisition was verbal. There was nothing like, you know, requesting it in a document, and you, you taking it out there, and quotations being invited. So that's how it was. So um, I think... It was all the same in, the, in all governmental organizations at that time, if I remember, because I remember being transferred from Narok to Kabarnet. When I went to Kabarnet again, it was the same thing. I was sitting in the, in, the, in the executive officer's office, and I was reporting to the district veterinary officer, uh, who basically was you know, the, the AIE, AIE holder, authority to incur expenditure, government expenditure. He is the one who made the decisions of what needs to be bought, what needs to be put in the stores and what needs to be developed, I mean, to be de or delivered to the point of need in the field. Then uh, I came, I was actually, I was lucky to have gotten a scholarship to come and study supplies at the Kenya Polytechnic. Uh, that was the time when uh, my, my scholarship came through the National Christian Council of Kenya. So they scholarship to come and study or see, I mean, IPS here. So when I came, I was posted to Kabete. Kabete, the environment was different because at least we had a large warehouse and we had, uh, you know, sections where we had a procurement section, store control section, or receipt section, and a dispatch section. And then we also had the different warehouses, sections where you had like reagents, which um, my friend uh, was talking about here. And then we had, uh, we had a warehouse which was carrying veterinary products like drugs, like uh, things like Novidium, you know, those uh, or drugs that were, they were using in the field for treatment of animals. Um, so what would happen, the, the districts would come to Kabete, draw these supplies from the warehouse and move it. That, there was a little bit of organization there. So in a nutshell, that's basically how it was then. And... Um, uh, there was a little bit of organization because I'm talking about a time when East African community had just been disbanded and all the senior personnel who were in East African community were absorbed into the government and I was fortunate to work with one of them known as J.C. Ogola. He was the senior supplies officer then 
Then I think we also had a, a, a somebody, Mr. Wambua, and that kind of thing. That is the time when now the career cadre had been defined. And people had been taken to KIE for training. We were also lucky that Crown Agents had taken a few of them for training in the UK, where we had the likes of Richard Nondi, we had the likes of uh, uh, Luke Obiri, we had the likes of J.K. Nyete, and several others whose name I think we had took. We had somebody, J. Karyoki, and another one. So these were people who were able to mold and shape supply chain or procurement in the government per se. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Michael. We want to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we want to ask Mr. Wakaria, how was his experience? Did he get the same stuffy stores like the one Mr. Michael got? Or his is a different story. <laughs>